you've been grinding FL Studio for the last two hours, but you just can't get your 808 and kick to work together. I I feel you, I, I've been there. But there is something you can do about it, something called side chaining. You never heard of it. Well, what it actually does in this case is bite out a portion of the 808, which will make space for the kick to fit in. This is so important if you want your beats to sound professional. Also, this video goes from easy to advanced, so make sure to follow along carefully. To make you understand what side chaining does, we're gonna use volume automations. Here we have an 808 and a kick in the playlist. Open up the channel rack and right click on the volume knob of the 808. Click on create automation clip. This will automatically create one in the playlist. This little line represents the volume of the 808. By dragging on these points, you can adjust it easily. If you right click on the line, you can create another point, which will then give you more control of the volume animation. Click and drag in between the two points to create a curved line. Try to create one that looks like the kick sample. That way you'll make just enough space for the kick to play until the 808 comes in. Now select the three clips and copy and paste them wherever you need them. Now of course this is a lot of unnecessary work, so that's why we're going over to the second technique. Using the envelope, this one also helps to visualize the effect. In the channel rack, click on the 808 sample to open up its properties. Head over to the envelope section and here you can see this graph. You can see this line as the volume, the higher it goes the louder it is. The sample will basically follow this line kinda like an automation clip. This isn't enabled by default, but once you touch one of the buttons, it'll do that automatically. We're gonna use the attack knob to make space for the kick to play. If you right click and drag this line, you can create a curve. The downside to this technique is that you can't visually see the kick's waveform, which is why you need to use your ears. Now your 808 ducks, which is good, but it also ducks when the kick is not playing which is not good. In other words, don't use this technique if you have other options. Next one is the most common way it's done, using the fruity limiter. So here we have the kick and 808. Open up the mixer with this button on top. Go to the channel rack and then send the kick and 808 to a mixer track. You can then give it a name and color to stay organized. Select the kick and right click on the arrow on the 808 track. Now select sidechain to this track. What we just did is send the information of the kick to the 808's mixer track. Now select the 808 and go to the effects rack. Find the fruity limiter effect and open Open it up. Select the compressor tab and go to the track selector. Here you can find the kick. This is because we sidechained it, remember? What we're gonna do now is different for every sample. But if you practice it a few times, you'll get the hang of it. Press the spacebar and let the loop play. Now increase the ratio to its max and turn down the threshold. Now you can see the kick biting in the 808, which is what we want. With the attack, you can adjust how fast the compressor kicks in. With this one, you can adjust the release time. Play around with this until you're satisfied. If you want to have a complete understanding of this compressor, check out this video. The fourth trick is probably the most advanced one. Dynamic EQ side chaining. The best one on the list. With this technique, we're not going to duck the entire 808, but only the low frequencies. Just like the other method, send them to a mixer track. Select the kick and add the peak controller to the track. You can just leave it open here. Next, select the 808 and add a parametric EQ to the track. Turn down the sub slash bass frequencies to make room for the kick. Now click on the multi-link controller knob. We're gonna link the gain slider to that knob and to do that just move the slider randomly. Now the controller detected the movement which means it's linked. Click the controller again to confirm and this will open up the settings. Set the mapping formula to invert it. Then set the internal controller to peak control peak. Then click accept. Let the loop play and pay attention to what it does with the 808. Now of course we don't want to boost the low frequencies. So to fix that play around with the bass knob until it hits 0 dB in the EQ. And now with the volume knob you can control the intensity of the sidechain effect. Mess around with these settings again. This is different for every sample, but it's the same principle. The next trick is further increasing the kick in 808 with an equalizer. I know that a lot of beginner beat makers don't really know how an EQ works, which is why I made this video where I will explain everything, so go watch that. Gotta go now, goodbye.